Hello and welcome. I'm Harish and in this channel I talk about various ways in which you can build anything without writing a single line of code. And in today's video, we are going to look at creating conversational apps using Typebot, which is a open source alternative to Landbot and also is a great platform for you to start learning to build conversational apps and experiences for your customers or uh, whoever is visiting your website or wherever you want to deploy this, right? Great. The first step that you will need is go to typebot.io and create an account. Creating an account is simple. You get a form and uh, you will just have to fill your details and uh, that will take you to your workspace, right? In your workspace, you can create any number of uh, typebots or conversational apps that can be deployed to any number of responses. There is no limit on uh, that for the free plan, but the limits are on organizing this into different workspaces and uh, making it much more organized. If you have, let's say, 100 bots that you've deployed, let's say, for you or your customers and so on, right? Let's quickly look at the interface before we jump into building our first conversation bot. There is setting and members. Members is uh, if you want to invite somebody from your team and work together, then that's going to be in the paid plan. And uh, there's a billing section where you can upgrade to any other plans they offer. And in the settings, you can change your workspace and also customize the icon of the workspace. And there is a preferences uh, section where you can update how you want to use the canvas. Canvas is where there will be blocks that you can drag and drop and design your conversational app, right? One is trackpad and the other is mouse. If you're familiar with using a mouse, then mouse is a good option to have. By default, it is trackpad, but you can change it to mouse if you want. Trackpad is on your laptop if you're using a trackpad. And then under your account, you can always have a uh, name change or profile picture change, or you can create API tokens that you can use the Typebot API somewhere else also. And the documentation for this is on their GitHub uh, repo. If you are interested, if you're a developer and want to go deep, give deep dive into the tool, right? Let's create a first bot, right? To create the first bot, click on the plus icon and then you get three options. The first one being start from scratch, then we have templates and then there is import a file. If you have an existing file or if somebody else has sent you a file, let's say you ask somebody else to create a bot using this tool, they have sent you a file, you can import it. But let's start with a template and see what options are available. Under the templates, you can see there is a live demonstration of the specific template. And on the right, you can see all the templates that are available. There is a lead gen template if you want people to fill a form and give their information to you so that you can follow up with them and talk to them later on. You can do that. And if you want a customer support template, that is also available. If you want to run fun quizzes to your customers, that you can do. If you want to have a lead scoring mechanism and evaluate your leads, that is also a template that is available. And if you want people to pay for your products, that is also available. Let's quickly jump into basic uh, template. Let's say, let's start the first video with a customer support template. And you have to just click on use this template and that will give you the entire canvas with the template, right? So if you drag and drop, you can see all the options that are available in the template. So after the start block, the bot will say, how can I help you? And then it will give you multiple choice options, depending on what option you pick. As you can see, these are linked to other blocks. Let's say somebody says, I have a feature request. Clicking on that will take the user to the feature request block. And if somebody says there is a bug in your platform, it will take to the bug section. Now, all of this ideally should be designed first on pen and paper where you write down how the conversation with the customer will look like if you're building a customer feedback based application and then start building it on any tool like this, right? Let's say type board in this case. And once you have collect the information from the customer, then there is the thank you section, which is named as buy block. You can always rename these blocks. You can always customize all of this template and make it your own. But the idea here is to show you what are templates and how you can work with the templates, right? Now let's quickly see how this works in the preview section. In the preview, you can see there's, let's say I said there is a bug. It says, okay, what is the bug? I will say button doesn't work. And then once I click, it says, it moves on to on which email can we contact you? Let's say Harish at so and so. Then I will say send. Right. So it says thank you so much for now. Once you've previewed, right, let's quickly look at all the options that are available as part of this bot. There are speech bubbles which are the user 
uh, facing ones, right? For example, let's say you want to send a message, you add a text block. If you want to show an image, you will add the image block. If you want to add a video, you can add video block. And if you want to embed an external uh, application or a website or whatever PDF or an iframe, you can do so using the embed block. Now, if you want to collect information from the users, you can do inputs, right? You can collect text based email, phone number, uh, you can do date, you can do a website, you can also just get a number, it can be an age or whatever specific number you want to get from the user or if you want to collect payment also you can do that. Now we'll build individual type bots for this as we go through this video series. But the idea of this one is to see what are all the options that are available. Now, let's say you have a condition where if your user enters a specific option and that matches with your condition, you want to send the user to a separate block, you can do that using the conditional block. You can set variables right here you are collecting the details about the bug and it is stored in a variable called content right and here variable is email where the user's email is stored so to set that you can do set variable and if you are a coder and if you know how to write javascript you can always custom code right and if you want to connect the user to a separate bot that you build you can also do link to another bot from one specific bot using this block and these are all the integrations that are currently available as I make this series in the month of June, the first week of June, but these are bound to increase. As you can see, there is already one that is coming soon and I'm sure uh, there will be more that will come as the founder of this tool keeps building more, right? There is Google Sheets integration, there is Google Analytics, there's a webhook integration and there is email integration where you can trigger send an email from the bot itself. And then there is Zapier using which you can integrate it to pretty much any platform out there. And then there is Pavli also, which is a Oh, an amazing alternative to uh, Zapier, right? So these are all the options that we have when we are building a conversational bot, right? And along with this, we also have themes, right? You can write custom CSS and change the theme here. You can also do changes to the avatar and make it uh, disable your avatar from showing and show a user avatar and then change the colors of each of these things, right? And also under the general section, you can also change the font if you want to change the font. If you want to change the background color of the whole bot, you can do that. Let's say you have a black color website design or notion pages in the dark mode and embedding this will show a white background just for this, right? So if you want to change it to the specific color that you have, depending on where you are embedding this, you can also do that using the customize the theme section. And then under the settings tab, you will see there are three options that we have of which the first one is obviously the pro one where you cannot remove the type bot branding if you are using the tool uh, in a free plan. But along with this, you will also have the typing emulation. How long do you want to show it? Do you want to show it or not? Or just disable it. This is the animation that comes when the bot is actually giving you a response. Since this is uh, a bot that is responding to the user, having a type typing emulation will also make it a better experience for the user to see and make, make him feel like, make him or her feel like somebody in person is probably responding, right? That's the way to trick the mind. And then there is metadata. If you're sharing just the link, you can always customize the title, the description and the image. These will appear, let's say you are sharing this link on Facebook or Twitter or wherever, whatever the short snippet that appears about that link can be customized from here, right? You can also add custom head code. Let's say you wanna add Google Analytics code to track how many people are actually opening this board and customizing it or conversation is happening with the bot, you can actually track that using the custom head code. If you hover over the question mark, you can get what is available and what is allowed in that block, right? And the last but not least piece is how you can share this bot, where you can embed it, how can people interact with the bot that you've built, right? The first step is you can customize the link, right? You can make the link your own, but the typebot.io domain will stay. If you want to add your own custom domain, let's say you have a, let's say I have a domain called harishkotra.com, and I want this bot to work on my domain only, I can actually upgrade my account to pro account and then add a custom domain. So this will become harishkotra.com and I can customize this to CES demo or anything that I want, right? And press enter, that'll work. Now, if I copy this and open it, just the bot will start working with that one link, right? Oh, amazing, this doesn't work. Let's see, looks like it's not probably saved. Let's see. Oh probably a bug for the developer but ideally that should work i'm guessing because i'm just copying and pasting it wow that doesn't work so we found a bug also today that's good 
right? So here are the options, right? Where you can embed this. If you have an existing WordPress website, you can embed it by clicking on this. And then there is a URL that comes that you can copy, install the official WordPress plugin they have, and then copy the type bot URL and complete the setup. If you have a Shopify store, then these are the options that are available for you. If you have a Webflow based website, then these are click on this and these are the options clicking on this will give you a code that you can copy and put it in your Webflow interface. And if you are coding, you, you know all these options and notion, as I mentioned, if you click on this, you get a embeddable link right now. If you open this, I think this should work. Oh, wow. Beautiful. But yes, the, you get the idea. Oh, now I know why it doesn't work. This is a great way to learn new platforms and tools, right? Uh, so sorry about not trying this out before uh, making this video, but uh, also a good uh, showcase of saying, I, I don't rehearse or edit this way too much. So you know why this doesn't work because we haven't published the bot, right? Once you publish the bot, this should start working. So now I copy the link and I paste it and it works. Now, this doesn't work with a custom URL that we did. Let's uh, change this. And now let's copy the actual URL that we want this to work on. Yeah, this should work now. As you can see, that's how this starts working. And whenever there are submissions or conversations that are happening, you can always see them here, right? Whatever the user response, you can actually see them here. And also there is an analytics section where you can see how many people have viewed your bot and how many people are dropping off where in which specific section are all available in the analytics section and submissions will have all the details of who interacted with your bot. With that, we'll come to the end of the first video where we talk about how you can use a template and customize the bot and deploy it. If you found this content useful, drop a like below and consider subscribing because this channel is all about building without coding. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.